All right, guys. So today I'm in the presence of royalty, Miss <laughs> Kylie Mass, one of the best swimmers that we've had in the past decade. And, and I cannot be more thankful, Kylie, for doing this with us. Thank you so much for sitting with us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. So how's training going, Kylie? You doing well? Yeah, it's been good. Had a couple bumps in the road at the beginning of January with some COVID and Christmas break, but back into it now and I'm looking forward to getting in a good training block. Good. Awesome. Yeah. So it's it's great to to see you guys. We, we got the opportunity to see you guys kind of do a, a mock meet today and I just got a chance to to tell my swimmers that you know, it's great to see you guys kind of execute your races, no matter what's going on. And now knowing that you kind of had a, a tough December and January, watching you go 59-4 again on her back, it's like, it was an opportunity to show young swimmers that you guys just like, you just know how to execute the race, right? It's almost like you're in control, mm -hmm. you do it, it's another day at the office. What do you think about that, uh, Kylie? Yeah, thank you. I think over the course of the last two years, I think it's really shown me to not think so much about the training that I've as much as I use the training that I've done mm -hmm. to build confidence for myself and to help myself you know through those tough times and in preparation for races but at the same time I think not thinking about that too much because like we we came off of the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic when we were out of the water for four months or however long it was and then getting back into swimming again and people were still able to swim fast and like I think over the last two years the pandemic has shaped the sport a bit differently because it's allowed people to not believe that there's one recipe for success in, in the sport which I think there was a little bit of before I think a lot of people believe on high volume and, and just very specific things in the sport that you needed to do in order to see success and I feel like over the pandemic because there's been such a wide range of people doing in and out of the water multiple times yeah. throughout the years for restrictions, for COVID, for quarantines, things like that. A mix of training because of restrictions again and having to do dry land at home or just mm -hmm. like all sorts of things. Like people have been able to adapt and do whatever they mm -hmm. need to do to stay active. And that's still been able to help them and able to produce fast results in the water. So I think I wouldn't have necessarily thought that way two years ago, but since the mm -hmm. pandemic and kind of having to adjust my mindset to just continuing to stay positive and believe in myself. And yeah, I only had two weeks of training. I was out of the pool for 10 days with COVID and just have had the last two weeks back in the water. I had really no expectation for today's little time trial but I think that's beneficial to not think about it too much and just yeah. rely on my my body memory my muscle memory and just think of the number of times I've swum that race and just really try and and focus on a couple little things and then allow that to just kind of propel me to do the race <laughs> <laughs> and that that's a good point it's I remember talking to you a, a, a while ago. I think when we this all started mm -hmm. And you really, I think at the time you were not swimming and, you know, it, it's, it's almost like every swimmer had to fall back on the idea that we're all athletes first, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you see yourself as an athlete, there's athletic qualities, you can still work anywhere you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, well, that's definitely what age groupers have had to do. Have you thought about it like that, Kylie? Like, has that helped to you? Like, just think yourself, not just as a swimmer in the water. So essentially, like, I need the pool to become better. But well, we, put the, we don't have the pool. So now you have to see yourself as more than a swimmer. Yeah, 100%. I think growing up, I was always very active. And I loved I loved mm -hmm. sports. And I loved doing different sports. And I still, you know, as I got older, I still loved being outside and just being active and doing things. But as I got more serious in swimming, it was just swimming. And that, yeah, that yeah. was my workouts. And those those were my training. So yeah, since the pandemic, it's definitely been just what what can I do like even when I mm -hmm. had COVID and I was feeling fine it was just like okay well I'm in my room like I have a couple dumbbells like let's see what <laughs> I can do just like doing something to stay active and I even like YouTubed a couple I love dance and I love music so like oh. I I was getting a bit sick of um, just <laughs> doing like little workouts in my room. So I was like, okay, how can I change this up? Stay like, active. how can I, mm -hmm. yeah, stay active? Like, I want to do a little bit of cardio. So I looked up like 30 minute cardio dance class and like, just like looking for any way to stay active, I think is so important, but it doesn't have to be just in the pool or it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be just in the weight room. As long as you're moving and you're engaged, I think it can be beneficial. If you, Absolutely. If you well, it's better than just sitting <laughs> and doing nothing, right? Exactly. Um, exactly. 
So, and, and you talked a little bit about focusing on small details. I mean, it's, it's actually, it's kind of nice to see you come out of, like I said, a, a kind of t- a tough December and January with COVID because it, it definitely feels like uncharted waters, right? Every time we are in a lockdown or we don't have the opportunity to train, you know, it's something we've never dealt with before. Nobody, not even you guys, right? Mm-hmm. So is it hard for you, Kylie, to focus on, well, I can't think about my time. I have to think about the execution of the race. How do you kind of work yourself through that? Yeah, it's definitely challenging. And even as we, you know, are able to do more of these, and I kind of get more used to racing again, long course and having more expectations for my time, like it's still challenging to Mm -hmm. not have too high expectations. Like you Mm -hmm. have to think of the whole picture, you have to think of, okay, what what are you doing in training? Like, of course, I want to be able to get in the water and go best time every time, but that's not going to be the case. And that's not reality in our sports. Yeah, so it's all about just like managing what you're thinking and and your thoughts. And I think for me, it's about looking at the big picture and like, okay, well, what was this last week of training been? Like, if it was really hard, then, you know, maybe I'm not going to be going that fast. Like I'm fatigued, but at the same time, not using that as, as an excuse as well. So not right, 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 um, right, right. still believing, believing that you can achieve and do whatever you put your mind to. And I think that all narrows in on looking at those small details because it takes the emphasis away from the time and the outcome. So for example, like today, I was like, okay, like this is going to be, you know, I haven't raced long course in a long time. Like it's been, again, haven't had a lot of training. I was like, this is going to be interesting, but (laughs) I just need to like, I was like, okay, just like focus on my, my underwater, like have a good turn. I'm Ryan said before, I went up to the blocks, just like think of those two powerful strokes into the turn, come off that wall. And that's what I was thinking about. I was like, okay, just let the first, like you know 25 35 40 meters flow focus on the turn come off the turn and then we don't have that far to go yeah, <laughs> Only yeah. like 30 more meters and then I was really just like I knew it was going to be challenging towards the end and I was you know telling myself positive thoughts and just kind of say, saying to myself like stay strong stay strong mm-hmm. and yeah so for me yeah it's all about focusing on when it's not about the time and I don't want to be focusing on the time I think it's important to kind of put your focus on something else whether that's skills or kind of a strategy or something like that yeah and do you like I mean the ultimate great feeling is when you go a fast time I mean obviously that's like we all seek and you know we're we're ambitious right that's why we're we're competitors right and we are ambitious Mm -hmm. and we want to see that time go down but but then there's these things right like these things that you know even a a skill that maybe you struggle for a long time to get it right and then you get it right Mm -hmm. I try to preach that you know try to find some joy in accomplishing something like that too Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's not the sa- it's not at the same level, but definitely take your time to give yourself some credit and acknowledge that you've been working hard for this and you just got it. Right. And so mm-hmm. be happy about that. Right. And especially in a situation like today where, you know, it's just not the greatest scenario to be racing in. It's probably one of the worst scenarios to be racing in. And it, it's just it just requires a lot of perspective. And, mm-hmm. and mental toughness, right? For sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. I want to go a little bit more into something completely different, I guess now is, so you just, did you, ju- you just finished your time at U of T like school, right? You just, you finished? Yes. Last year I graduated. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like you kind of rose to international level when you were in university already, right? Like you went, Yeah. did you make world juniors? I can't remember that. No. No, no. So, so yeah. No. So you, you kind of really in uh, your first international, I believe, was Pan Am's, right? Pan Am Games. No, I didn't even make Pan Am's. I made Sisu Games in 2015, and that was kind of my first ever. Wow. Team Canada yeah. team, yeah. Oh wow, that so mm-hmm. so you really went from you know being a good swimmer to being a great swimmer like that in in mm-hmm. university, and and now you had to face balancing school and. <laughs> And some of the most arduous training I'm sure you've done. How, how did you manage that, Kylie? Did, what are your secrets on that? <laughs> yeah, I think it is something a little bit unique about my situation and kind of my career is that I didn't, like you said, I, I wasn't an exceptional swimmer when I was younger. And in club swimming, I was, you know, I was a good swimmer. And I, I'm really thankful for 
my club upbringing and I think it really gave me a great foundation of all the strokes I had a great foundation of technique and I really just like enjoyed swimming and I kept doing it and I wanted to do it into university and kind of yeah I had goals but I again like I wasn't super good like I hadn't made any sort of national team any junior team I kind of grew a lot of my friends and my club team like grew faster than I did and I was kind of like a bit behind them so I think that's something important to remember remember for your club swimmers is like you you know everyone grows at different times and like everyone has their strengths and weaknesses so to really just like if you're feeling down and if you're seeing others keep you know succeeding and doing best times and you're not quite there yet like if you know keep going and it could still come so I Mm -hmm. just wanted to preface with that yeah no I mean um, that's that's that, that's a beautiful message, a hundred percent. And uh, yeah. sorry, I I wanna I wanna chime in for one second. Yeah. I I do think that I mean swimming is not the biggest sport in Canada. Like it's it's I think it's growing and I think it's more popular. Mm-hmm. I mean I think the success of the women's team is helping that with that a lot, right? But it, but the reality is we're not hockey, we're not no. we're not even basketball, we're not even soccer, and so it's only natural that age groupers can feel like their career is over after high school, mm-hmm. right? And I for sure try to really fight that off and my goal is kind of to keep like a 17 year old cannot feel old and no. I feel like in right like and I think in Canada 17 year olds feel very old like they're like mm-hmm. I'm 17 already I'm like no you're just 17 yeah I, I think that I, I mean you know I was lucky to be in the U.S. and you know I, I my observation Americans they're playing baseball and swimming up until grade 12 and then they go into the NCAA program and now they commit to swimming right so they mm-hmm. stay young at heart and at mind when Canadians mm-hmm. are feeling old and done and I think mm-hmm. that's very wrong in my opinion mm-hmm. <laughs> But, uh, and, and so your story is great, right? Because you can see that, you know, you love swimming, you stay with it and you kind of stay true to your heart, to what you wanted. And then you went to university and really flourish, right? Which is awesome to see. That's great to see. That's what we need. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, anyways. no, 100%. And I think too, like the culture and like the group of swimmers that I was with in my club team is like what kept me in the sport. Like I, I truly love, we were from a small, like I'm from a small like city and there weren't a lot of like pools. We would swim at random like high school pools and yeah. we all kind of went to high school at different areas and we'd come to, to practice and it was like our social time. And I just like, I loved going to practice. I loved being with my friends and like those were, I wouldn't necessarily say I had a big group of friends friends like in high school it was more like my swimming friends were my friends and like yeah I would hang out with them so I truly believe that having such a great group and having so many friends like within my club team was what kept me wanting to do the sport even more as well because I wasn't necessarily like seeing success like some of my other teammates were in the pool Mm -hmm. and then yeah moving into university like I I was kind of like okay like yeah I want to I think I want to swim and like go to school um (laughs) education was something really important to like my family so I I knew I wanted to go to like a good school and get a good education and I was like yeah like I want to swim it wasn't like oh I'm on the fence if I swim or not but I wasn't like going to swim necessarily so that just again like is an example of how I love swimming and I wanted to do it and I had goals in the sport but I wasn't like the best swimmer right and then yeah I I went to university and I really kind of like excelled in my first year um that would have been the year of 2015 so Pan Am Games were that summer and talking with Byron Linda they were like it would be so cool for you to make the team like the Pan Ams are here in Toronto and I was like oh yeah but then unfortunately like missed the team but I was able to qualify for the World University Games that summer so yeah yeah, I think it it was a challenge to balance like moving away from home first of all like I had never lived away from home before so that was in and of itself a challenge and then getting used to a new school program getting used to a new swimming program like the swimming program was nothing that I had ever done before and Mm -hmm. involving weights as like weight training and there's just so many new variables that come into play when you make that that step from a a club team into a university but so many great changes like new people like a new city new program and like change is so powerful so I think as long as you're you know being able to balance it but embracing the challenges and and kind of embracing the whole like learning opportunity and bringing it back to what you said just about having perspective like Mm -hmm. if it's something you want to do and and maintain perspective about it all like I think it's so doable and it can be so fun and so rewarding yeah absolutely so let me ask you this when you came into university like you said you had goals did you ever dream to be 
a world record holder or a or an Olympic? Like, did you dream about the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, I definitely did. Like growing up again, I, I lo loved playing sports. Like we always watched the Olympics as a family and I had always dreamed of being an Olympian. And even I remember in high school, like like my friends at school, like knew I swam, but didn't know like the caliber, didn't really know what swimming was about. And they said, oh, you're going to go to the Olympics one day. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but then, Classic. yeah, I don't think I really like, in 2015, I kind of saw like when I made that World University Games team and then I won the Hunter back that summer in South mm -hmm. Korea, it was kind of like, that's when I saw the sport in a different light because I mm. saw my potential and I saw like just how much fun I was having and like how much, not that I didn't, I don't want to say I didn't care because I cared a lot and put a lot of time and, and it, it, hard work into that. But like, it was just like easy for me. Like mm. I, yeah, I you enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. it a little bit more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, and I just swam. And that's a skill. Pain, pain was not a, not that much of a question or a, not. It wasn't not as issue. painful as it is now. I would say. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Younger. So yeah, I don't know. In, in 2015, it just like yeah. Again, I don't want to say it came easy, but I think because I like I, I enjoyed it so much and I was just doing it, like I just like opened my eyes to what I could continue well, to do in the sport, and it kind of it motivated me to want to get back to training and to. Go into the next year and it being Olympic year, like I, I wanted to. I think missing the Pan Am Games team too really kind of motivated Triggered, me because yeah. although I had an amazing opportunity to do the World University Games, you know, missing that home Pan Am Games like Canadian team, yeah, like I think that would have been a really, really incredible experience. So mm -hmm. I think it kind of motivated me and put a little bit of more of a fire under me. And yeah, and then leading into 2016, like I, I wanted to make that Olympic team. I think Byron and Linda believed in me a lot more or I guess maybe saw that I could do more than what I truly believe mm -hmm. so yeah leading into those trials were you the top back stroker already at that time no, no you were not so there still... was, yeah so Hillary Caldwell yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dominique Bouchard. No, oh, right, right, right. So, yeah, so I uh, so, only swam the 100. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't swim the 200, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. so what I was going with it is too is, so it, it seems like you you had this dream of the Olympics, but it didn't really become real until a little later. Mm -hmm. Um, It seems like you have a pretty realistic approach, like meaning, you know, yeah, it'd be nice to make the Olympics, but here's where I'm at. And this is what my goal mm -hmm. is, should be. That That's something that, you know, I, I've, I've recently had a conversation with swimmers where they're like you know i always have this dream but the dream is just mm -hmm. seems to be a little farther and farther away and then it almost becomes hard to get excited about the new goal right like it's like mm -hmm. i had this goal and now it doesn't feel like i'm gonna get there so how do i become excited about this goal and, I, and it seems it seems like it comes easy mm -hmm. to you but i don't know if you have any thoughts about that yeah so i think i like I wanted it, but I think maybe my coping mechanism is to not necessarily exploit the fact that I want it that much mm -hmm. or put too much emphasis on the fact in fear of it not happening and protecting myself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So totally. I, I think that's kind of like just how I am as a person and how mm -hmm. I work through things. So it's like I try and like, yes, I really want it. Like deep down, I wanted to make that Olympic team, but I don't necessarily share that. I don't necessarily show it because it's in a, in a way of protecting myself. And in that way, I'm I'm kind of giving focus to other things in my life, like school and just trying to build that balance. So I'm not all in on yeah, one yeah. thing. That's that's good advice. That's good advice. And I feel like that's something that has worked for me for mm -hmm. the last number of years because I, I still do believe that I do that to an extent. I'm not necessarily a type of person that talks a lot or necessarily shares my goals even. But yeah, I, I think deep deep down I am extremely competitive and I, and I know what I want. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think in terms of what you're asking about getting excited for new goals, if if a dream seems unattainable, I think for me, at least I would say is like bringing it back to finding balance and like maybe mm -hmm. trying to balance out that, that dream or goal with something else. And like giving your focus and attention to something else, because that might just elevate your motivation to when you go back to swim. Like if you're super focused on, okay, I want to, you know, do this in school and I want to get a, this percentage on my project. And then you're kind of like your, your mind and your body is like, removed from swimming and you're focused on something else and then when you come back to swimming you're like okay i'm ready and like i want to do this, this yeah this. it's like a fresh it's a fresh restart yeah. right it's it's a, it's, a, it's really a, a mindful exercise a mindfulness right mm -hmm. like it's it's removing yourself 
and yeah, it's dedicating yourself maybe for a little bit on, on something else while that other stuff kind of refreshes up. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. Yeah. yeah, That's a great advice. That's great advice. Uh, on to something a little bit different now, because I know we don't have a lot more time left. I, 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 I like to, this is kind of for fun to ask, like, so... 2016 was really a turning point for the women's team, right? Mm -hmm. And you were a big part of that. And going into Rio, you definitely were underdogs, I would say. Mm -hmm. But now you're mm -hmm. going going into Tokyo, you guys are not underdogs anymore. You're like top dogs. How, how does mm -hmm. how does that how was it different your your Rio experience as a team and in mm -hmm. Tokyo? Yeah, I think internally, like from a team standpoint, like nothing changed. Okay. I think we all were, because day in and day out, like our lives were, for the most part, I would say, like we were still just swimming and like we all individually have goals that we want to achieve in the sport and, and together on relays and as a, as a larger team. But we were just doing our business, like coming in, swimming, training, doing the best that we could, leaving, coming back, like prepping for meet, like the same way we would any other year. I think where it was completely different was just the noise and the external like media and pressure and yeah talk of of what could happen or this the possibility yeah. oh my god that's that's hard <laughs> that's yeah tough. I think that that's the biggest thing and I think fortunately over the last since 2016 I've been able to slowly kind of learn how to manage that mm -hmm. and I think again like as you know every year the team just continues to get better and better so I think we've all been able to kind of like mm -hmm. slowly learn where where to put our attention and where to just like use our energy and where to kind of where we need to stop and say okay no I'm not going to read that article or I'm not going to watch this video because it's just going to stress me out or at least that's that's how I go about it I'm kind of oh like, hey, I, no, I'm not I, I can I can only I can imagine right people talking about mm -hmm. you and talking about you know how you're gonna do that's I mean that mm -hmm. mental strength must be it's amazing I, I mean that's that's really tough you're and on everyone the deals with it differently like yeah I know and I mean again like you said swimming is not a massive sport so there's definitely less people kind of commenting on our you know potential results or results than there would be on some other sports but mm -hmm. still there there is a little bit of that noise and I think everyone does deal with it differently. I know Maggie, she loves reading Swim Swam. And, you know, some people get motivated by sure. things people say or what they read or things they see. And I'm kind of the opposite. I just kind of like to turn a blind eye and, and not read things. Or, you know, there's times when I'll look things up or, or read things or watch something when I want to. But if it's like in a high pressure, intense moment, it's like I need to know when when to kind of cut myself off and, and say like, look, I need to put my energy somewhere else and, and not think about that because in the big picture, it doesn't matter. It, it mm -hmm. matters about what what I'm doing, how I'm preparing myself for my race, and, and you know whatever I think yeah. internally. And it doesn't matter externally what other people are, are saying. So I think that was probably the biggest difference. It's just like more people knew of us, more people had expectations, yeah. more people had opinions on what we were swimming or who was going to swim this or what the time they were going to go. Yeah, and, and, and I was going to say, at the Olympics, swimming is one of the biggest four, actually. Like it's th in between sure. the four <laughs> years, like, they, and I, th you know, maybe hopefully the ISL changes that a little bit, right? Because the ISL is like, it's like a professional league, literally, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's the first of its kind. So when other sports have like the NBA and NFL and, or well, NFL, football's on a, but the, the soccer league. And so, you know, we don't have that. Well, we have it now and hopefully it grows to what it could be mm -hmm. but yeah the olympics is i think it's like the second most watched a sport after track and field something okay. like that yeah i know it's it's, yeah. it's huge actually so but yeah. um but yeah no it's 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 always great to hear you guys talk about this stuff because it humanizes you guys more Right. Like you, you, mm -hmm. you, you, when we watch you guys, you just look like, you know, most athletes watch you guys and it's like, you're right from another planet. Right. It's like, well, how is this girl doing what you're doing? Right. And, but it's, it's, I think that it's good to know the ups and downs that you guys face the, like, mm -hmm. like the blood and tears that you put into this, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Right. It's about, mm -hmm. the, I, I feel yeah. like those are the biggest lessons, right. It's the sacrifice mm -hmm. that you put in and the whole process of planning and executing it and then seeing the goals come through. And, you know, well, I, I guess I, I should speak more for, for myself. I, I, that's what I love to, to, to hear and see the most. And mm -hmm. I mean, obviously always, it's always fun to watch you guys race. So yeah, that's, that's, that, that's a great story, Kylie. Thank you for sharing one last little question. And it's just for fun again, what, what's your favorite Olympic moment? 
Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, I know. This is, this is a, I asked every yeah. swimmer and it's the hardest question because it's so yeah. many. <laughs> I mean, I think I had two very different experiences with the Olympics in 2016 versus in, in Tokyo for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, and the moments I loved in, in Rio were those after the competition, obviously like podium and, and being on the podium those are, are the obvious, yeah. memorable. And, and yeah, but apart from that, being able to spend the second week in the village and, and seeing other athletes compete, getting to go to other venues, I'm just mingling with the other Canadian athletes. Like those are some of my favorite memories from Rio and going into Tokyo, we obviously knew that wasn't going to be Case. allowed and um, it was going to be different. So um, I think from Tokyo, Tokyo, some of my favorite memories, again, apart from the podiums are just like spending time with the girls in our like apartment. Again, we weren't really allowed to do much else. So <laughs> it was a lot of like downtime. And like one of my favorite memories, which is I've, I've told like a couple of times is so one night we were getting ready to go to bed. And there's a, obviously a lot of stimulation when you're at the Olympics, again, from just being at the Olympics and it being yeah. the biggest stage State, for our yeah. sport. But also, again, like from your phone, from socials, from friends back home and family. And there's a lot that you can take in. And if you don't kind of manage that, it can be it can be challenging. So mm -hmm. one night, Taylor had brought like, I think it, her like candle or something. And so mm -hmm. she lit her candle and we yes. dimmed the lights and we were like, she put on this like peaceful piano music and oh, cool. uh, we, we made tea and we were just like sipping our tea and we had these beanbag <laughs> chairs in like the middle of our apartment. And we were just like hanging out there trying to like wind down and just relax so that we could fall asleep. And those are just some of my favorite memories because they're just so wholesome Intimate. and it's just like, it kind of, yeah. And and just special that you're able to like share these moments with people and like spend such quality time with people when you're also at like the most intense periods and moments in your career and, and in your life so yeah those are no. just kind of like hanging out with the girls and with the team and getting to know people on a different level and I I'm gonna say right now that I swear that I didn't tell you to say that because yeah. every 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 swimmer that I've asked this have a similar answer mm -hmm. and I, I just want to reflect on it that it's you know it's, it's it is about the journey right mm -hmm. I think the most beautiful thing we take away from our sport is that first is it is a tough atmosphere but mm -hmm. once you learn to embrace it and you learn to deal with it you kind of learn to open up your eyes and start appreciating mm -hmm. some of those you know like the, the the cliche of you know smelling the roses right like you, yeah you start you know and and every swimmer who've asked this have shared a, a, a like a very personal kind of you know just being with the, the team or being you know mm -hmm. or, or I think Yuri talked about how he was very shy and then he opened up I think he said a joke and everyone laughed and he was like oh well maybe I'm funny you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great story right and so because sometimes right like again when we're trying to find our place in all of this mess you know mm -hmm. you 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 get too caught up with your results and too caught up with the medals mm -hmm. and too caught up with winning and even though i'm a again i'm a big competitor too and i want to win but the, you you have to find the joy you it, it's not mm -hmm. to me it's not winning at all cost it's mm -hmm. winning but also making sure you're enjoying it mm -hmm. you're loving what you're doing and and the win just is so much more that much better right mm -hmm. so yeah no, that's amazing you that you said that because yeah. every summer said it the same thing so it's great to see that it's great to see that you guys are enjoying yourselves and so hopefully we get to see more and more of you guys yeah <laughs> well kylie thank you so much this was so much fun and all the best of luck for the rest of the season and with you know all, all the way to paris i will be watching you and uh, thank you for sitting with Nayak. thank you thank you for having me no problem bye bye bye